I'm going to show you how to create an interactive map in Webflow with your CMS collection. We're going to build this demo where the user can toggle between a list and a map. It's the same data on both the list and the map. Now Webflow doesn't have a way to create maps like this. Instead, we'll need to use Atlas, a tool for creating interactive maps that you can embed on Webflow websites. So we have Atlas and we have Webflow. But we need a way to keep the data in sync between Atlas and Webflow. So we're going to use Google Sheets. Google Sheets will be our source of truth. Both Atlas and Webflow will sync to Google Sheets. So if you make a change in Google Sheets, both Webflow and Atlas will automatically update. So time for the tutorial. So we'll start with our Google Sheet and we'll give our spreadsheet four columns. Name, address, notes, and button link. There are additional columns we could add. We're just going to stick to these four for now. Then let's add our first location, CN Tower. Da, da, da. And this is a good start. Now next we want to send this Google Sheet data to Webflow. So let's create a Webflow collection that has these same four columns as our spreadsheet. So here we are in Webflow. Let's go up to CMS and let's create a new collection. We'll call this collection locations and we want to add all four fields that match the spreadsheet columns. We already have name, but let's add address, notes, and button link. Now we actually need a tool in between Google Sheets and Webflow that lets them talk to each other. And that tool is Zapier. Zapier lets you create zaps, which are just automations between tools. Here are some example zaps. Send a Slack notification when someone fills out my contact form. When I post on Instagram, post the same photo to Facebook. And in our case, our zap will be, when I add a row to my spreadsheet, create a CMS item on Webflow. And here we are in Zapier. So let's go create a zap. Here we are in the zap editor. Now we want to start with a trigger and the trigger will be from Google Sheets. So the trigger is when there is a new or updated spreadsheet row and I'm going to connect to my account, choose the spreadsheet. I want Zapier to read from and the worksheet too. And let's test to see if it can read the Google Sheets data. And look at that. It read the Google Sheet data. Beautiful. So that's our trigger. After the trigger, we want to take an action in Webflow. The action we want is to create an item. Click continue. We'll choose my Webflow site and we'll choose the collection we just created. And now we need to map the spreadsheet columns to the CMS fields. We'll click continue and let's test. Let's see if we're sending data to Webflow. And look at that, CN Tower. Let's click in and there's all of our data from the spreadsheet. Now back to Google Maps for a second and uh, let's try something. Let's update this note and we'll save that and let's jump over to Webflow and oh, oops, okay. So when we updated our row, it actually just created a second duplicate item. And that's because if we go back to Zapier, anytime we create or update a spreadsheet row in Google Sheets, it's creating a Webflow item. So we need a way to distinguish if we are adding a new row to Google Sheets or if we are simply updating an existing row. Because if we're updating an existing row, we don't need that to create a whole new item in the Webflow CMS. That'll lead to duplicates. We're gonna add a new step. And it'll be for Webflow. And we are going to find an item. Let's continue. And again, we're going to choose our site, choose our collection. And we want to match the row name from the Google Sheet to the Webflow item name. Mark successful and run the steps. Yeah. Now let's try this. And yeah, it successfully matched the CN Tower to the CN Tower. After this, we want to add something called a path. 
and now our workflow can break off into two separate paths. Let's set some conditions for path A. We'll say go down this path if field name from our found item in Webflow does not exist. Now why does not exist? Because we're saying if you did not find a match in step two, that means this location doesn't exist and needs to be created. Now let's set conditions for path B. This time we'll say go down this path if field name does exist. And we need a new action here. So let's find Webflow. And this time we want update item. We'll hit continue. And we'll choose the site and the collection. And we'll select that item. And again, we're gonna map the fields here. Let's continue. Let's test this step. Awesome, it seems to be working. Let's give it an actual try. We'll hit publish. And so now if we go back to our spreadsheet, we should be able to update and create new locations. Let's start by updating this note. And then let's create a whole nother location for the Art Gallery of Ontario. And this can sometimes take a few minutes, but if we go back to Webflow, we should see, yeah, there we go. We have our new item, Art Gallery of Ontario. And if we click in, we can see, yeah, we have all that data. And let's see, did CN Tower, yeah, CN Tower is updated as well. Okay, so let's go back to Webflow's design editor and let's quickly hook up this CMS collection. I'm gonna fast forward through this. I'm guessing if you're on this video, you probably have a pretty good understanding of Webflow. And there we go. We got a very basic design all wired up from our CMS. This is amazing because our CMS is getting its data from a Google Sheet. Next up is our map and we'll be using Atlas for this map. You can find a link in the video description for Atlas. And I should say, I'm actually the co-founder of Atlas alongside my friend Carl. So I think Atlas is awesome, but obviously I have a bias. So here we are in Atlas. Let's start by creating a new map. And we're gonna go down here to import a spreadsheet. And we have an option here to sync to a Google Sheet. Now there's one very important instruction. You have to make sure your spreadsheet is set to anyone on the internet with the link can view for sharing. So let's go back to our spreadsheet, click the share button, and let's make sure, oh, it's set to restricted. Let's change that. Anyone with the link. And we'll copy the link. Done. Head back to Atlas, paste our link here. We'll click create. And just like that, our map is synced to the Google Sheet. So we have markers based on the locations in our Google Sheet. If we click the marker, we'll see it has all the information that we had in the Google Sheet. This is awesome. Now let's add this map to our Webflow site. We'll go over to publish. And we have our embed code here, but actually let's click customize embed code. I think it's gonna look a little bit better if we make this uh, a bit taller. Perfect. Now let's copy the embed code, head over to Webflow, and let's switch over to our map page. We'll add an embed element. We'll paste in our embed code. Perfect. There we go, just like that, our map is on the website. Let's publish and see how it looks. There we go, we have our map, and if we click our list toggle, we have our list. Awesome, let's go back to the map for a second. Let's try zooming out a little bit. Yeah, if we click our markers, we get the modal pop-up. Awesome, and if we go back to our list, we have the list. Ah, that's nice. Now Atlas has a ton of features beyond this. For example, you can change the map style. You can change the marker style. You can customize modals however you want. You can add overlays like search that let your visitors find locations that are close to them. 
Atlas is designed to be flexible, so we want you to be able to create any kind of map with it. Now I should say, we are using four tools here, and three of them, Webflow, Atlas, and Zapier, will require a paid plan. You can't do this on their free plans, so I hope this at least shows you how far you can get just using no-code tools, and I think that's pretty awesome. Again, you can find a link to Atlas in the video description, and if this inspires you to create a map, please share it in the comments. I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching.